Hi, this is Stephen Gray from Michigan State University, and this is the second video in How to Use Mental Modeler. Um, I've invited someone else to join me today. Hi, I'm Allison Singer, and I'm a PhD student working with Stephen. And what it is we're going to do is we're just going to define a problem and try to model an issue to answer a question just to show how the software works. And one of the things that we're trying to do with this exercise is to cut down on the ambiguity that we have in normal day-to-day -day communications. So here's a cartoon that shows somebody talking about an iceberg, and they're using um, qualitative words to describe what it is their idea that's in their mental model, and the other person is thinking about uh, ice cubes. So clearly there's some kind of miscommunication going on. One of the things that uh, mental modeler and participatory modeling in general tries to do is cut down on some of those ambiguities uh, and assumptions that we have that are inlaid informally in our head. So uh, we decided to use the context of uh, understanding a farm dynamics for this exercise. And one of the th questions that we wanted to answer is how will drought and increasing energy prices impact the dynamics of a farm? So we need to open up Mental Modeler and we'll try to answer this question. So Allison, when you think about a farm, what are some of the components and concepts that come to mind? Well, you've got crops. Crops. You've got income. Now is that uh, income on, from the farm level or income on the household level or are we just going to leave it as income for now? I would think maybe it's the farmer income because that's... Who's got the farm? Well, fair enough. Farmer income. We also want to make sure that we put those components that are going to help us answer that question, which was... Fuel prices. Fuel prices. And drought. And drought. So what are some of the other things you think about when you think about how a farm operates, the farm system? What is it comprised of? You've got labor, you've got uh, human labor and mechanical labor. Human labor, mechanical labor. What else? Is there anything else? I mean, there's a lot that goes on on a farm. So maybe we should start with these and just start to define some of these relationships and build out. So what is the relationship between, so as human labor increases, does it have an influence on crops? Yeah, you would expect that um, the amount of crops would increase. Maybe we should call that crop yield. Okay. So the actual yield. Uh, what about mechanical labor? Is it a similar effect? I would think so, yeah. Okay. I'm not a farmer, though, so don't hold me to these. Uh, as crop yield goes up, um, presumably it has a positive influence on farmer income. Yep. Uh, how is fuel prices related to some of these other things? So as fuel prices increase, the uh, mechanical labor is going to get more expensive, so that might decrease. Okay. Um, and presumably, now, does fuel prices have a relationship to human labor? Well, it's possible, I might be stretching this a bit, but if you've got less mechanical labor, you might compensate for that by more human labor? Yeah, that might, I don't know. That might be true. I will leave that as a question mark for now. Okay. Um, what about drought? Uh, presumably, crop yields will decrease with drought. Okay. There we go. Is there any other? So maybe let's build off of farmer income and stretch it further and talking about farmer well-being. And presumably, uh, as farmer income increases, we're going to assume that it has a positive influence on farmer yes. well-being. Um, is there anything else that we need to put in this model to answer our question? Uh, 
Uh, I mean, I think we've covered the basics, at least. All right. So a couple of other features in Mental Modeler, now that we've got our, our model built, is we can look at um, some of these relationships and we can define them about whether we're really confident in them or not. If we had put a relationship in between fuel prices and human labor, which we decided to leave ambiguous, but we could say that there is one, but we're not very confident that it exists. Another factor that we can put, or dimension that we can put in the mental model, is we can talk about what is evidence. So crop yield, we might put, um, that's a little bit obvious, but we may, <laughs> we may put why we included crop yield. Because I see crops on farms <laughs> might be our justification. If there's ambiguity in what we mean by the term drought, in fact, um, how would you measure drought, Allison? Yeah, I mean, there's a definite time scale to drought. So are you looking at, like, one year of low precipitation, or right. is this a five-year so timeline? amount of rain over within a month um, over time is what we'll say. But this usually helps us when we talk about the unit of measurement to get a clearer idea, especially when you're working with the software with lots of people, to get consensus on what we mean in terms of the definition. Uh, we also have a grouping um, function where we could talk about the biotic factors or the social factors or the abiotic factors. Um, and we could that way kind of have an idea of what uh, components and what categories they belong to comprise our model. Um, when we get into more complex models, we can also turn on view like tunes and from. So in this case, you can see that crop yield is affected by these three factors, uh, but it itself only uh, impacts farm income. What the software does also is takes this model that we've built uh, in the modeling interface and allows us to look at uh, the matrix structure of the model. And this is just an alternative view of what we developed in the modeling interface, uh, but it sets it up in an adjacency matrix and it puts the relationships and the weights that we defined on the lines in the model here in these values. So the way to read this is from left to right, and crop yield only has an effect on, in this case, uh, farm income, or in income, <laughs> as, I, as I call it. Phonetic spelling. <laughs> That's right. Uh, drought influences, so if you read it in the columns, drought has an influence on crop yield, or crop yield is affected by drought, Crop yield is affected by human labor, and crop yield is affected by mechanical labor. In the preferred state and metrics, it calculates automatically based on the structure of the model that we used in the modeling interface, different dimensions. So we know here that there's seven components that comprised our model. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We can also see this in the seven by seven matrix here. The number of connections in the model, which in this case is seven, uh, because it's a rather simple model. The density, uh, the number of connections per component, which is clearly seven divided by seven in this case. Uh, the number of driving components. Now, driving components are those that only have an arrow outward. So we can look at which of these just have an arrow outward and are not affected by anything. So drought in this place is a driver because nothing impacts it, and it is influencing the dynamics of the system. Fuel prices are also driving this system. And it seems like there's one more driver. It's probably human labor because we didn't define any relationship here. Let's go see if that is the case. Uh, drivers are fuel prices, drought, and human labor. We can also look at which variables in the model are more central to system operation, which means that the weights and the number of connections are higher. So in this particular case, crop yield uh, is very central to this system. And we'll go back and we'll see that, indeed, it's got more connections and these are probably higher weights. Which makes sense because it's a farm. <laughs> this is true. And, and as we noted, we see crops on farms. So you can also look, if you've got a lot more variables, um, you can... You can use this centrality measure to look at which ones are the more important ones. So in this particular case, crop yield, as we discussed, farmer income is second, followed by mechanical labor and farmer well-being and so on. What we can also do is describe what we want the system to look like. 
So we can define any of these variables as we want to see it increase, we want to see it decrease, or we really don't care either way. And this is really just more about deliberation as far as if we were to enact a management intervention or try to change the outcome that we expect, um, what would we want the system to look like in that case? In the scenario phase, we see that all of the variables that are included in the model here on the bottom, all seven components, crop yield, farmer income, fuel prices, drought, human labor, mechanical labor, and farmer well-being are listed. So because there were seven variables in the model, you're going to have seven variables automatically populated here. And you also see them here on the left-hand tab. Now what you can do is run scenarios by selecting each of these, uh, um, either multiple variables or one at a time, and see things like, for example, if we increase drought, how do we expect the system to change? And in this particular case, when drought increases quite a bit, we see that crop yield is going to decrease and farmer income is going to decrease as well. If we go in and we add fuel prices, we probably see uh, that crop yield is going to decrease, farmer income is going to decrease, and mechanical labor is going to decrease. Interestingly, when we go back and look, farmer income is too, or farmer well-being is kind of too many steps away from drought and fuel prices to see any response. So if we, in our mental model, in our informal mental model, if we look at this scenario and it doesn't match what we would kind of predict intuitively, we may go back to the model and start to calibrate these to better match what we would expect to happen. And you calibrate them by changing the weights? Uh, that, yes, or the relationships. Okay. Or the amount of connections, uh, the closer, fewer links in between. And that's basically it. Now that we've created our model, what we can do is save our model, and it'll save it as an MMP file automatically. Farm Dynamics and Income. We can save it to our desktop. And then if we are to close this out or open it again, we could load our model. This is a little personal. <laughs> Farm Dynamics Income, and there it is there. Hey, look. And it should have also saved uh, our scenarios. So we can add multiple scenarios and go look at them one at a time to compare in the scenario screen how they've changed. Uh, is there anything else I've missed, Allison, as far as a basic tutorial? I think that's pretty good. All right, well, thanks for your interest, and uh, our email is... Uh, uh, can be found on the Mental Modeler website. Um, yep, thanks for listening.